News Talk 820 WBAP and now on FM at 93.3. Uh, Chris Crock Show, of course, 800-288-WBAP is our number, 800-288-9227. So a, um, I want to play for you first the mayor of Denver who is um, going to be pulling the budget because of all the illegals that are all over his city. And they literally kicked out. They recently kicked out 800, and they're begging in the streets, holding signs in English, that, and they don't speak English. It's amazing. It's unbelievable. It's just never before seen. And by the way, all these policies, the Democrats now are going to get aggressive on the border because they're trying to win, and they're uh, worried about some special elections going on in New York where they could uh, maybe help get the House back in their Democrat hands. Here's the problem. They're like, we're going to get some serious on immigration. Don't you think it's too little too late? Here's the mayor of Denver. You think this is going to be changing in the next eight months before the presidential election in in November? Thank you all so much for being here this morning. Uh, I'm here to talk a little bit about the devastating impact of the failure of Republican leadership in Congress this week to pass comprehensive immigration change and the impact that will have on both city budgets and on services that we can provide for newcomers in the city. The second is we will start to have to greenlight a set of hard decisions about budget reductions across the city to meet those costs that we know will continue to arrive. Um, we want to talk about two of those today. While they're the first steps, they unfortunately will not be the last and may not be the hardest. Um, uh, this is a plan for shared sacrifice. And so in terms of our first step on city cuts, um, we are announcing today we will make some changes both uh, to our services at DMV and to our services on Parks and Rec. Uh, Isn't that great? Isn't that so exciting, guys? Wait, wrong one. Hold on. There we go. Oh, Hercules, 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 Hercules. I clicked on Hawk, which is right next to Hercules. <laughs> but um, they, isn't this exciting? The illegals, they're going to have to cut their budget for like regular th- services for citizens because the illegals. Uh, meantime... Pakistani illegal on terror watch list given a free day of release. The um, uh, ICE authorities released a Pakistani man who's an illegal who is on the terror watch list. They um, messed up and let him go free. And about 24 hours later, like, oops, they went nuts and they were able to hunt him down. But that doesn't happen often. They apprehended him. He crossed illegally uh, at a southern border in California, but then they found him uh, at a uh, 24 hours later or so in Tecate, California. So he was coming to kill us, most likely, uh, or help people kill us, but uh, they let him go, so that's good, right, for the terrorists. But then, oops, they, they got him 24 hours later. Now, here's what, this is an exclusive from the Daily Caller today. Uh, the D- One DHS official told the Daily Caller, imagine how many cases like this get through without us ever knowing Um, So that's how bad it is. They're letting terrorists into our country from Pakistan, which is a perfect terrorist nation that would love to slaughter us, kill us and our blood in the streets and dance on Jewish blood and American blood and and, uh, let everybody get ululating back in Pakistan. Uh, And then also today the announcement that uh, the this is this is worse today. The illegal migrants. Now we know there's another uh, illegal that Joe brought in, a 15 year old who was shooting at, uh, shot at uh, during. Uh, he's trying to steal from a department store in Times Square. Uh, the security guard stopped him, and he shot uh, at some people there at a crowd of people. He hit a vacationer, a tourist, and then the cops chased him down, and they he shot at them two separate times. And he had a 40 cal, so uh, he's also suspected of having an armed robbery earlier and some other, uh, like a burglary or what a bank bank robbery uh, as well. And then that's separate from a 15 year old illegal who a couple months ago was arrested in Manhattan for killing a homeless guy because they argued about something over, uh, you know, at the homeless camp. So that illegal killed a man, according to cops. Now you have, as you know, the beatdown with the illegals. I'm going to play that body cam in a second. It is it is very telling how sick and wicked these people are, how organized they are. They're terrorists. They're gang members. They're violent criminals, and they are operating. Here's what they did. 
There's nothing left to steal in Venezuela. As I've told you about, Wall Street Journal said that the criminals have nothing to steal. They complained about it in a front page article uh, two, three, four years ago. And uh, everybody they hold up, there's nothing there. They got one bullet left in their gun. So they come here, and this is so amazing. It is ripe, low-hanging fruit, for the easy for the pickings for them. We ain't, we're, we're not thinking that there's going to be third-world gang members who uh, you know, have destroyed their country and have terrorized their nation. Now they're here. They're here. And remember, in Miami, the first documented one of the most violent, vicious gangs in all of uh, Venezuela, and even the apparently in the uh, the uh, Central America, is Tren de Arag- Tren, as in train, Tren de Aragua, and that's a state in Venezuela, and they are notorious, and they are murderers, and in fact, they uh, they're here. And they arrested 38 of them at the border thinking they're getting them stopped. But there's so many more that came in. And their first kidnapping, uh, home invasion, and murder happened in Miami a couple weeks ago. It was the first confirmed uh, kill and kidnapping from this terrorist gang in Miami. So it's New York. It's Miami. It's all over this country. Now, uh, the illegals who beat down the cops. I'm going to play that body cam in a second. I want to hear from you right now, though. Chime in at 800-288-WBAP, 800-288-9227. Do you think another violent illegal in New York City shooting a woman in Times Square and cops who just got apprehended late today, do you think that shows everybody how dangerous Joe Biden's invasion is and will be in the years to come? We don't even know about half the illegals and the, uh, the criminals uh, and the rapists and the murders until we catch them one day. Uh, there's a whole bunch. There's tons more. There's thousands more out of Joe's millions of illegals that he's unleashed on us to rape us, kill us, murder us, do God knows what. So, and do you think the illegals who are on the terror watch list are getting released into our country a lot more, like this Pakistani we heard about today from DHS? Do you think a lot more of these terrorist illegals are getting released than we're hearing about? I sure do. And do you think illegals who are on the terror watch list are getting released? Excuse me. Do you think it's too late? I should say. For Democrats and Biden to get aggressive with this illegal invasion, is it too late? Because they're saying, oh, we're going to get aggressive now so we can win the election. It's too way too late, in my opinion. 800-288-WBAP is our number, 800-288-9227. The illegals who beat the hell out of the cops, you hear the video in a second, have a wider conspiracy. And by the way, four or five or six of them are on the run still. They have never gotten caught. They never will. They don't think they're ever going to get caught. The ones they arrested in Arizona two days ago were not them. They're still on the loose, ain't going to get caught. They're... Gangbangers that are seriously amazing, successful, wicked gangbangers. You'll hear from them in a second. But there's a wider conspiracy the New York Post reported today they're ste- the, of stealing phones to make lavish purchases in their home countries. The police say uh, the, they routinely are stealing phones. They're using the Apple Pay and credit card information inside the, to purchase cars, pools, and other, other luxuries back home. They're buying cars in Ecuador and Venezuela. They're putting pools in their homes there. All this money goes back and forth. That's why the larcenies are out of control. It's unbelievable what they're doing. Bus tickets to California they went to leave were paid for by your tax dollars uh, to bust them out of uh, New York uh, and other cities because they're overwhelmed. And um, this is it. This is it. You ain't get. This is what Jason Jones, our our, uh, Newsmax border correspondent and former head of uh, DPS for border operations, counterterrorism, and counterintelligence for our border in Texas, said you ain't seen nothing. Five years, 10 years, 15 years, all this is going to be way worse. Morgan and Fort Worth, you're on News Talk 820 WBAP and now on FM at 93.3. Thank you, Chris. I like the enthusiasm you're bringing tonight. Thank you. uh, If if no, if. Nobody can't get fired about, up about this. You just, you're dead. Mm-hmm. Um, and the thing about it is, it's frustrating me, Chris, is that the, the Republicans aren't being blunt and calling the Democrats out on their lies because nobody is saying it direct uh, in that Trump had it. I mean, it wasn't perfect, but uh, compared to what's going on right now is he had it under control. And, and, and then on day one, you reverse those policies. If, if the Republicans just need to say, "Look, we're going back to Trump's policies," or you're wasting our time, and because it's so blunt and obvious, and I don't understand why people go back and forth and waste a ton of time when it's staring right there in front of you. That's the, that's what's kind of yes. frustrating and confusing me. And and it's 
And, and, and this is such a horrible attack on the poor people all across the country. Trump but how do you, how do you, how does it make you feel to know that they're stealing? They've they've uh, mugged like sixty two people uh, in a ring in a racket, and they're buying pools for their homes in Venezuela and Ecuador, and they're buying uh, uh, items, luxury items for their homes, and they're literally here. They're going to rob, rape, kill us. And uh, and burgle us and beat us and t- and then go home and live lit rich from the, their their booty here. It's and amazing. look at Cruz showing showing the ankle bracelets. They're 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 leg irons. These are slaves coming across. And Mayorkas doesn't even know. <laughs> yeah, he knows. He doesn't care. He doesn't exactly. care. You're and Joe exactly doesn't right, care. Chris. Remember what they're Joe liars. said when he was when Joe was working as vice president. And I got to roll, Morgan. But thank you for your great call out of Fort Worth. Uh, by the way, our number is 800-288-WBAP, 800-288-9227. Um, when, when, um, when what happens with this is when they are telling us that they're sending uh, this money back and they're buying pools and they're buying high-end items for the house, it is literally here, they're here to send the money back and transfer it back through crime and violence. I got a lot more to say on this, and I want to play right out of the box. I'm finally going to play this video I've been telling you about. It is the body cam footage of the terrorists who beat the hell out of our New York cops, and you're going to hear them wickedly chanting together in unison. It's real. It's real. It's it's uh, very frightening, honestly. And then you're going to hear them beating the hell out of the cops, and and uh, it's insane. It's just insane. Joe Biden's done this to us, and I don't think people are going to forget about it in eight months because they're trying to be aggressive now. B to the S. All right, hear the audio next. I want to hear from you right now. 800-288-9227, 800-288-WBAP. Chris Crock Show, News Talk, 820 WBAP, and now on FM at 93.3. All right, uh, I'm going to uh, play the video here in just one sec. I want to give you our, our phone number first, 800-288-WBAP, 800-288-9227. Uh, this is News Talk, 820 WBAP, and now on FM at 93.3. Make it a pre- Preset, and here is, uh, uh, and I'll toss out the question again for you. Are you? Uh, what do you think about this? Are you? Do you think another violent illegal in New York City today, a 15 year old shooting a woman in Times Square and shooting at cops two separate times in this chase, and on the loose up till this afternoon? Do you think it shows everyone just how dangerous Joe Biden's invasion is and will be all of his illegals? And then you add on the. Um, the ones from Venezuela who are wanted and they fled and beat the hell out of the cops. You're going to hear from them in a second. And if you speak Spanish better than me, you'll be able to understand this chant. It's too. It's too. I don't. I can't pick it apart. Uh, but they're chanting something before they beat the hell out of the cops. It's really scary. And these are the terrorists Joe brought in, and they're buying pools for their houses in Ecuador and Venezuela. They're buying uh, luxury items for their homes. So they rob us, beat us. Shoot at us, kill us, uh, rape us, uh, drag us, beat us, and steal from us, and they go home to the luxury. They ain't here to, to stay. They're here to rob, kill, rape, and leave. Um, and they they ain't gonna. They're getting away. They ain't gonna get these last four. They're gone. Do you think they don't know how to be undetected and get back to the Mexico border? They're fine. All right, now. Uh, do you think uh, another violent illegal shooting a woman in Times Square and then at the cops just shows everybody how dangerous this Biden invasion is and will be in the years to come? And do you think these illegals are on the terror watch list that are getting released into our country that we heard about today? you think there's a lot more of them than we're hearing about? And do you think it's too late for Democrats and Biden to, quote, get aggressive with this illegal invasion as they say they're going to do in the Politico? 800-288-WBAP is our number, 800-288-9227. I chose to pick through this video and pull two big sound bites out of it because I want you to hear the terror uh, that comes from Joe Biden's illegals and how coordinated and wicked and scary they are. Here's a chant, and if you can translate for me on this one, I, I, I can't figure out. It's too in the ether for me, but you can probably do it. Here we go. They're 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 having a great time. Uh, terrorizing people, stealing from them, wickedly prancing around Times Square. They own it. It is theirs. And when they got released from jail, remember, they flipped us off, kissed kissed the cameras. They own us. 
bend over, they own us. We pay for everything. They rob us. They rape us. They kill us. They steal from us. They take our rec centers. They take our, our dollars, our hotels, everything. And we pay for them, and they beat the hell out of us, and they mock us and scare the hell out of us on our own streets. That's what Joe Biden's done, and it's just getting started. Don't think it's just in New York. Do not be an idiot. Don't be a fool. Out of these millions, 9, 10, 11, 12 million illegals, don't you dare think it's just a couple thousand. It's more than that, and you know it, and I know it. Now let me play the second bite. This is the body cam footage. Um, and if you know that chant, let me know. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Yeah, I know the last word is not a good one, but the rest of them I don't know. All right, here we go. Now, do you hear them? Are they scared? No, they're dancing around like some of my friends back in the day that I got friends with in Chicago that beat the hell out of people all the time. They were in gangs when they were younger. They dance around. They beat the hell out of you. They beat the hell out of the cops. They have no fear. They're dancing, having fun. And then they go for your gals when, when they see them on the streets. You t- I'll tell you that right now. Okay, 800-288-WBAP is our number, 800-288-9227. What are you hearing in here? I mean, I'm hearing uh, terrorists that are wicked. If you're a hardcore, violent gangbanger beating the hell out of cops, what do you think in Venezuela if you do this? Where cops are corrupt, they can beat the snot out of you, throw you in jail for nothing, make you bribe them to keep yourself out of jail while you rob and pillory, pillory people and you know and uh, uh, pillage people. When you are uh, like a smooth Louisiana fox, Louisiana fox when it comes to dealing with Venezuelan corrupt, bad, nasty, beat you up, torture you in jail, throw you in jail for nothing, cops, and you come here. Dude, beating the hell out of our cops is a weekend uh, retreat. It's a dance and it's a dance party. It's fun. Uh, a friend of mine grew up in Chicago that I became close with. He was in my suburb school. He was sent to live with his uncle because he got into too much trouble in the city. He was just in way too much trouble. He, you know. Anyways, we became friends, and uh, he would go to Chicago for the weekend and come back, and I'd see him. He'd have massive flared up knuckles. He loved beating the hell out of people, and I watched it. Uh, sometimes and it was like oh my it was like I'd never seen anything like it these guys are that but they're on steroids because they beat the hell out of bad Venezuelan cops this is this is fun for them this is all fun for them let's go to Dennis in Pleasant Grove you're on News Talk 820 WBAP and now on FM at 93.3 how you doing Chris good how are you Uh, so far so good man hey I'm a Mexican descent and I see this is really bad man because you know didn't Venezuela let all the prisoners out of prison you know what I'm saying we'll say it again then Venezuela dump out its prisons and send them here. Yes. Yeah, yeah, send them all up here, man. Would you? Ex- what, what, what could we expect, man? Oh no, no, they're friendly prisoners. It's okay. It's okay. You know. This is uh, taking but, uh, candy from a baby when you beat up our cops oh, compared oh, to no, their no, cops no, no, in they, Venezuela. No, no, it's taking, no, no, it's taking the candy store from a baby. Right. That's exactly you know right. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna put you. On. Did you hear what they were chanting in Spanish? Well, not very good things, man. Like you said, you okay. understood the last word. But yeah, you didn't but, know the I rest, mean, though, right? You couldn't make out the rest? No, no, no. They were, they, they were just happy. They were just... Isn't it were, frightening? Yeah, happy. Isn't it frightening? They, they, no, it is, man. That's why I carry on a daily basis. You Amen. Know? That's all these guys so, are. They're thugs. They're punks. They're violent. Yeah, they're wicked. Yeah, exactly. It is disgusting, bring, man. It's they're terrifying. Bring, they're bringing the ugliness up yeah, here. Yeah. Yeah, this is nothing. Right, they can eat us alive. They can eat our cops alive, oh, yeah. man. They ain't in oh, Venezuela yeah, anymore. This is this is La La Land. Yeah, Dennis, thanks yeah, for your great exactly. call tonight. I appreciate you, brother. Right. Look forward to your next one. All right, coming up next on the Chris Crock Show. This is a really interesting one. New York Times: Parents highly involved with their adult children's lives. Is it a good thing or a bad thing? 
They call it snowplow parenting, but actually, could it be good? Could there be some good to this? We're going to talk about that next on the Chris Cox Show, News Talk 820 WBAP, and now on FM at 93.3. This is a fascinating article in the New York Times today. Parents are highly involved in their adult children's lives, and they are fine with it. Um, we, we want, and I got a whole bunch of different uh, pieces of information from you for you here, but I don't want to overwhelm you. But they talk about parents who are, I want to make this the right way here. Uh, it, it's two new uh, Pew Research surveys that just came in on young adults, 18 to 34, and their parents. And this is very interesting to me and and probably to you too because most of us have kids between 18 and 34. I got a 20-year-old and a 17-year-old. And it's funny when I tell folks that who I haven't talked to in several years, like, oh my gosh, 20 already? I'm like, yeah, trust me. I'm, I'm like, it's hard for me to say that without going, what the heck? And uh, they talk about if you and I are heavily involved in their lives, that does apparently have, in two separate studies, very good impacts on them. Their mental health, their success, their education, their finances. And they talk about getting help from them. And I'm going to give you some of those details in a second. But apparently it really works and it really helps. And it's been an interesting balance for me. And I bet you it's an interesting balance for you. And also, I bet at your work or in your life, you're seeing these parents who are helicopter parents or snow plowing parents. So they get everything out of the kid's way so it doesn't have to deal with any adversity. And um, too much of that is very bad. You know that and I know that, right? You can't wipe your kid's buttocks for them. And that's kind of what I describe it as for people who do everything for their kids. Have you heard about this? Have you heard that some parents, for example, I'm not making this up. I've read it in the news a couple times over the past uh, year or two, that there have been instances in job interviews where the parents go in with the kid. Have you heard about this? Parents going in with the kid for a job interview. I, that is unconscionable to me. My daughter went to work at, and my son went to work, and well, my daughter went to work at like 15, maybe even 14, I think it's 14 or 15. And we didn't go in with her on the interview. We dropped her off or whatever, you know, for the interview, but we didn't go in there with her. Dude, that's insane. And of course, we helped her, we coached her and stuff. And then she's gone to on to another job, and then she just uh, gave notice on that when she's going to another job. Uh, at uh, one of the major retailers here in the Metroplex um, and uh, got a nice fat race and good for her. But um, that's insane. And if you're a teacher or professor or a coworker, you, there's people you might – where you might – there's instances where I'm sure you've seen parents literally doing things they, they – or a professor or a teacher – uh, the, that you see parents doing, they have no business doing. Like, stay out of this. Your kid can speak for themselves, and you're hurting him or her, you know his or her. And uh, but this is saying, on the same token, um, this is saying, quote, um, that uh, young adults, 18 to 34, from this Pew Research, tell a nuanced story. Parents are in fact highly involved in their grown children's lives. Texting several times a week, offering advice and financial support. In many ways, the relationships seem healthy and fulfilling, though, not the other way around, you would think. And I think this is how we are. You know, right now they're still living at home, and they're still full-time students, and they're working as well. And we offer them counsel anytime, even when it's not solicited. But don't you can't do it in a lecturing way, right? you got to be very – come on, it doesn't work. They get mad at you. They get frustrated. They don't want to hear it. But when you let them ask for advice and seek your help – and you have a strike that balance, I'm telling you, that is how you make that kid golden. And ours are way ahead of where we were. And I think it's because of that. So I think you need to be involved heavily in your kids' lives, but not control them and super manage them. Uh, of the uh, the study here, and I want to hear from you right now, though, as well. Chime in at 800-288, right? Uh, chime in right now at 800-288-WBAP. That's 800 800- Two eight eight nine two two seven. Are you heavily involved with your young children's lives, as this article talks about? Uh, when have you seen parents who are way too involved in their young adult children's lives, or stepping in for them on things like, you know, things that the kids should be doing themselves? And have you personally experienced over-involved parents? And what do you think the consequences of that are? 
Like, what happens to a kid whose parents do everything for them? They have to be failing tremendously, like spectacular failure, I would exa- I would imagine. Uh, 800-288-WBAP is our number, 800-288-9227. I want to hear stories where you have uh, worked with somebody and seen this, or you've heard about this, or somebody that you know did this, it was bad, you know, getting involved, whether the, the kids, uh, the adult child's work, or their school, or something that was over the top. Um and, and tell us of instances where you or others you've seen have done the right thing getting involved with their kids, where some might see it's a little too much, but it's it turned out to be incredibly uh, important. 800-288-WBAP is our number. That's 800-288-9227. want to hear from you now. Uh, lines wide open for you at 800-288-WBAP. Uh, these parents who are Gen X, that's me, are more willing to say, hey, this is good. I like these people. They're interesting to the kids. Because they're young adults. They're fun to be with, said a professor at UT Austin. You get advice from a 50-year-old with life experience who's incredibly invested in you and your success. I'll be darned. That's me. And I love teaching my son and my daughter about their finances. I literally will sit down when something happens in my life, good or bad, and I'll just talk to them not long for like – I know I only have a minute or two at best. And I just tell them what I'm going through or what I just did and why it was good or why it was bad and how they can learn from me. Uh, I tell them about my auto auto issues with, you know, if I have a crash or a car thing or, you know, how to ma- maintain your car, finances, job, all sorts of stuff I'll be telling you about, too. But I want to hear from you. And Andrea, or Alexandria, I should say, in Fort Worth, you're on News Talk 820 WBAP and now on FM at 93.3. Hi, Alexandria. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm great. So talk to me. <laughs> So I'm actually an HR manager of a small business. Oh, and, gosh. <laughs> uh, also a parent of kids in this age. Mm. And um, I had a young man, 25 years old, whose mom called me not once but multiple times to check on her little boy. Um, and it ended up, I could see where this was going. Of course, I never gave her any information. However, uh because he, she continually wasn't waking him up for his job, he didn't come in on time and ended up getting himself relieved of his employment. He's 25 and he can't yeah. get himself up? Correct. Holy crap. See, mine is 20 and he was he's getting a, a 4.0 uh, in college now in, in university here locally for his uh, third year. And he's intensely studying. He's working uh, as a barista dude for 20, 25 hours a week. He's got this crazy schedule. He's not home half the time. We don't manage it. The time for us to really get involved with him in the weeds deeply is when he's, you know, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. You know what I mean? And and, and, and then you let him – he he gets really frustrated and mad sometimes, and he breaks down like we all do. And then we say, hey, let us help you. Can we help you? And if he wants to help, we'll give it to him. But this is insane. A 25 25- can't wake up and his mom's calling you yes and he has his own child holy crap the the 25 year old adult male has his own child and his mom is calling you correct holy crap now see that is insane I would be happy to if my son got in trouble which you know sometimes he's got in trouble with things whether at work at school I'm like, I'd be happy to I counsel him but I ain't calling nobody. And and I think the way it works with us is I, if I happen to know, trust me, if I know he's got to go to work or something, we have a schedule we all share on, on our computer or our, lab, our phone thing. But, like, so if I notice something, like, hey, are you supposed to be up now? Oh, crap, oh, crap. But he deals with it. I don't deal with it. I mean, dude. Right. I, I mean, I have a 16-year-old son. I have, I have six children, actually. But the 16-year-old's a great example of he's at work right now. Right. He knows his curfew to be home is 1030 mm-hmm. because he has homework to do. He knows if he fails his classes, I will step in. But aside from that, it is his job to manage those things. How about these parents we're hearing about who will, uh, uh, when, the, when the kid gets in trouble at school, they'll tell the teacher, well, what did you do to make him mad? What did you do to make him this way? Like, what it the hell? It drives me insane. It drives me insane because teachers... I know many of them, and they are given so little to do with so much for so many children, too too many children. And 
because of parents like that, you have burnout in teachers who could be doing phenomenal things for children. I think about this kid uh, who who you had working under you there. Or you had to let go uh, for who's twenty five and was wasn't waking up on time. His mom called for him, and he's got a kid. People like that should not be allowed to procreate. I mean, well, that's a that's I mean, that's like, a, that poor yeah. kid. That poor kid's got almost no hope. I mean, what what's his grandmama going to do for him? Call in for his grandmama is going to call him for him when he's twenty. The grandkid. Yeah. And uh, this reminds me of one last thing. I'll take a quick story, then I'll let you go. Uh, I was at Walmart. I'm in, I'm looking for deodorant, and this is why Walmart's a bad place to go for ninety nine percent of the time. But we have to go there because it's stuff, stuff cheaper. Certain things. I'm sitting there and I'm looking at deodorant, and some some mental midget uh, loser who's probably in his mid twenties. Um, comes up to me and walks kind of right in front of me and takes deodorant off the shelf, smells it, and then puts it on his underarm on both sides and then throws it back on his shelf and walks away. And I, I was stunned. I was staring at the guy. He didn't even look. He didn't care. And then you want to know what the, the kicker is? It reminds me of what you just told me about the guy you had working for you that had to fire. Um, uh, I go to the checkout line with my wife, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. I tell my wife, that's him. And he's got a kid and a baby mama sitting there. I'm like, that kid is bleeped. That kid's future's oh, gone. Oh, my goodness gracious. I mean, what kind of a freaking puke pig, just man-child pig, uh, takes deodorant off the shelf, sniffs it, throws it on his underarms, and throws it back on the shelf, and he's spawning children. Disgusting. Anyways, oh, my gosh. appreciate your call tonight. Uh, there's there's hope but uh, for you and me and our kids and for some of the others we're, we're seeing out there, but this is this is some scary sh- shiznit. Appreciate your call. I mean... Yeah, take care. Take care. Great call. Look forward to your call right now at 800-288-WBAP, 800-288-9227. Are you heavily involved with your young adult children's lives? Uh, When have you seen parents who are way too involved in their young adult children's lives or stepping in for them on things the kids should be doing themselves? And have you personally experienced over-involved parents? What do you think the consequences of that are? Well, you grew up to be taking deodorant off the shelves, putting it on and leaving it on the shelf and going back and having kids out of wedlock. Sounds about right to me. All that's coming up next. Want to hear from you, 800-288-WBAP, 800-288-9227. Got some more stories and some good news about those of us who are pretty involved, pretty heavily involved with our kids, but not over the boundary line. Next, News Talk 820 WBAP and now on FM at 93.3. Make it a preset. 800-288-WBAP is our number. That's 800-288-9227. This is a fascinating story. Part of it's uh, very disturbing, but a lot of it's uh, actually feel good, too. And I want to uh, spend some time on that. But this is a New York Times story today about uh, American parenting. And it's two Pew surveys that were just completed, and it shows heavily involved parents. And it depends on it's a, that's a catch that's a trick phrase right because you say heavily involved parent and we think like uh, our last caller who had a guy who was 25 at work and he was showing up late all the time and his mom was calling in for him and uh, I mean that's insanity and then he's got a kid out of wedlock at 25 it appears I mean that, that's insane a, a, a mama still wiping her 25 year old's buttock uh, who has a child as well I, that's insane. Um, as I said, it reminds me of the guy at Walmart who walked in front of me and took some deodorant off the shelf, put it on his arms, and then sniffed it, put it on his arms and underarms, then put it back on the shelf and walked out. And then I saw him with a baby. He's a baby daddy with a baby mama at the checkout. I'm like, that kid's screwed. That kid's life. I prayed for that kid because I'm like, that kid, the chance of that kid working out well is so – he's damned with the parents like that. That's just terrible. That woman played with that man and created a baby? I mean, what was she thinking? I love dumb – Fools, I love dumb uh, cretins. You know, um, I love I love somebody who uh, has no respect for themselves or others' property. Yeah. Anyway, um, but uh, we are parents like you and me, and they talk about fifty year olds um, sharing their life experience with a, a young adult who's incredibly invested in you and your success. You know, or a fifty year old who is incredibly invested in you. And your success, that's me with my kids and my wife with our kids. Um, and they talk about um, it's good. The, they, they, the, the adults are thinking, the Gen Xers, that's us, are thinking these kids are fun to be with, these young adults that were our kids. And I agree, we have a lot of fun now. Oh, my gosh, do we ever with the 20-year-old and the 17-year-old. We have silly, stupid fun, um, which is beyond incredible. It's such a high for me because it's a new – Level so the different areas of parenting get um, are just different, but this one I'm really enjoying. 
Uh, also, when we go on a romantic getaway in the near future, the 20-year-old and 17-year-old are going to be managing the house. No kegger, I told him. No kegger party. <laughs> uh, just for three nights. But um, compared to the, listen to this, this is very, very interesting to me. And I want to hear from you. Uh, are you heavily involved in your young adult children's lives? Um, and when do you when have you seen parents who are way too involved in their young adult children's lives or stepping in for them on things the kids shouldn't be do, should be doing themselves, doing it for them? And have you personally experienced over involved parents? And what do you think the consequences of that are? 800-288-WBAP is our number, 800-288-9227. Uh, the story reading on, compared to their parents as young adults in the early 90s, uh, these new kids are much more likely to be in college or have a college degree. They are somewhat more likely to have a full-time job, and their inflation-adjusted incomes are, are higher. The hyper-intensive parenting can go too far, they say, uh, and has gotten only more hands-on since young adults in the survey were children. Young people say the mental health is suffering, and researchers are sounding the alarm saying that if a child has no independence, their lack of independence, hence my phrase, wiping their buttock for them, uh, overparenting can deprive the children of developing skills to handle adversity, failure. The new data suggests that uh, young adults uh, are more reliant on their parents texting them for life advice when older generations may have figured out their problems on their own, but the effects do not seem wholly negative. Listen, I still text my mom and my dad, and they still I still talk to them, and they still give me support and counsel. Because I love them and I value them, and there's nothing wrong with that. When you go through some of the hardest stuff, you know, you pray that your children call you and tell you, and, and you can help them through it. Um, not wiping their buttock for them, but helping them. You know, advice, wisdom, comfort, uh, enthu- uh, give them in, uh, in cheer, enthusiasm. You know, um, or if they're screwed, they're screwed. You know, son, you're screwed. On this. <laughs> Um, they found that close relationships between parents and uh, grown children protect children from unhealthy behaviors. If they get significant parental support, better are able to cope with change and de- had higher s- satisfaction with their lives. The findings said we just couldn't believe this the first time the researchers said because of assumptions about over-involved parents. They do get a lot of su- par- uh, par- uh, support from these parents. When boomers were growing up, it was a belief rooted in the American ideal of self-sufficiency. When you're 18, you're on your own. No more. This may be the first generation of adults, that's us, whose parents actually, or that's our children, grew up with the mindset of talking about this kind of stuff. They still rely on their parents for emotional support. Um, the, uh, the you know, so that's good, and they should. And moms with their daughters—that's something you can't replace or manufacture. All right, coming up next in the Chris Croc show. I can't wait to get to this one. Airlines are weighing. There's one of the airlines out there is now weighing passengers. I can't wait to get into this with you. Coming up next, and um, you know, if uh, if we should weigh everybody and make the overweight people pay for uh, the their airfare more than we, should. I, I don't want to pay for their airfare. Do you? That's next on the Chris Croc Show News Talk A twenty WBAP and now on FM at ninety three three. Hey, the North Texas Auto Expo returns February twenty second through the twenty. 20-